this video, we're going to take a little used instrument that, believe it or not, has some interesting little quirks to it. Let me it Go ahead and get started. So first things first, we have ourselves a lovely 172S here. It's a nice little plane. I love the leather interior. Way nicer than any 172 I've ever flown, but that's okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go float over to this interesting magical instrument that sits on our dash that most people don't even notice except when it starts spiraling out of control. So this is a magnetic compass. The purpose here is to tell us our magnetic heading. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar how this operates, uh, basically what you do is you have a component in here that will try to pull in itself and align itself with magnetic north. Because there's a giant ball in here and you have that element that's trying to constantly do it, it basically will pull the ball around until it has realigned itself with that northerly direction. Now the cool thing is, if we move the plane left or right, that's going to cause that northerly bias to actually indicate our actual heading versus always pointing towards the north which it will do, but that will be basically give us our component. Now, the way this works is you actually have a little bit of a fluid in here, usually like kerosene or something like that, that basically allows this ball to kind of come flipping around and bouncing around inside so that we can reliably read it. So there are a bunch of little things that we have to worry about with this instrument. Uh, the first one you're probably going to notice is the fact that uh, as we're kind of bouncing around here, this thing is going all over the place. Uh, that's because it is a, just floating in a fluid right now, which means when people are turning with it, it causes some interesting problems for us because it's going to be all over the place. Also in turbulence, it's going to be bouncing everywhere. The other interesting problem with the magnetic compass, and if you've ever actually been one of these aircraft and flown down here before, is you probably observe that you have this little item here, this is called a compass card, that tells you that the compass does not read correctly. You're sitting there going, wait, what? Yeah, it doesn't read correctly. It's because there's metal in the plane and that causes some distortions in its ability to safely and reliably read the magnetic fields of the plane. Now, if you have a propeller heat on this thing, oh my, it's possible to have this thing do tumbles on you, depending on how powerful that propeller heat is and how close your propeller is. So for example, you'll notice I'm traveling due north right now. According to my compass card, uh, in order to go north, I actually need to point the plane at 359 degrees. So one degree to the left. So if I truly wanted to make this plane go north, you can take a look at my directional gyro here, I'd actually actually pull that one to the left in order to travel that way. You also notice if I scroll here, 30 degrees is about 28. You can see it's 121 degrees and so on and so forth. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is this actually modeled? Um, as far as I can tell, no, it's not modeled. And also half a degree usually isn't enough to break the bank as far as navigation goes, unless you're trying to circumnavigate the planet. And um, which in case I probably wouldn't recommend this airplane and probably wouldn't recommend trying to do that with the compass. So the next session we're going to have with the compass is what happens when you maneuver the plane. Now, the interesting thing with this aircraft, other than the fact I asked it to hold 5,500 feet here, is the fact that when you maneuver the aircraft, the compass is not going to necessarily instantly react. Or, in some cases, it'll actually react in such a way that doesn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take my throttle. I'm going to pull my throttle all the way to zero. Now, notice what the compass does. Nothing. I'll go ahead and put my throttle back up to the correct position here and allow it to accelerate. Now, you're sitting there going... Well, that makes sense. It's because it's already aligned. If I change speed, the, the compass, the little ball will kind of do one of these things like you can see with my mouse inside of its housing. Not much is going to happen. Uh, that, that's correct. But what happens if we go ahead and align ourselves with a specific compass heading? Ah, uh, there we go. Facing due east. Uh, our airspeed is stable. Our altitude is stable. Everything is ready to go. So now watch what happens when I cut the throttle. There it is. You see it? Let me go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward now. You see it? What you just observed is the acceleration error you have the compass. Now, compasses, remember, they're trying to align themselves with the magnetic field. When I suddenly accelerate the aircraft, it's still going to be trying to go ahead and align itself with the magnetic field. So as a result, as you observed, our direction shifted in one direction. When we went ahead and uh, increased our acceleration and tried to speed up, it actually sped the other direction. The way I always like to think about it is think about north, like the North Pole grabbing onto this compass with a string. When I hit the gas, it's going to have a tendency to go like this, which is going to be a turn towards the west. Now, if when I pull it the other way, it's going to have a tendency to turn like this towards the east. And now notice, if I'm facing east and I allow this to happen, you're going to have that happen. This is also true if I'm facing west. All right, we're all lined up, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, got ourselves pretty much right on west. The compass is nice and stable. I'll pull the throttle all the way to zero. And now what you'll notice is the compass immediately shows a turn towards the south because we're on the other side. Now, if I jam on the gas, you'll watch the compass actually show the bias the other direction and is going to be a bias directly towards north. Now, you're probably saying, well, if I'm heading south, uh, this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, technically, you're correct. Uh, when you head south, what will actually happen with the compass is it'll tip up. It'll do one of these things. It'll actually have just a little bit of bias left or right, depending on how perfectly south the aircraft is facing that direction. Now, the problem doesn't just start with acceleration. 
Uh, the other type of errors you have is what they call it turning errors. Now, when this happens is you run into an interesting situation where basically whenever you are turning from the north, it causes your own compass, you're right there, to basically go the opposite direction. Whenever you're taking a south turn, you're actually going to watch the compass lead itself. And then, of course, as you complete the 360-degree turn, it's going to go ahead and show that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a turn from the south towards the north. So now observe the directional gyro facing west. Observe our friend the compass up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and order this turn here. Now watch what happens. Since we're coming from the south, you're going to notice that the compass will lead the turn. You can see that we're already well past that point. And now as we start getting close to north, your compass immediately starts lagging the turn. You can actually see that we're almost 35 degrees behind here. And we'll go ahead and snap ourselves to the north. Now watch what happens as we hit north here. Our compass is going to spiral itself around. In the real world, by the way, it's never that smooth. It would go woo, 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 all over the place. And now you can see it has actually aligned itself roughly with the new heading that we are. Since we're now facing the north, if we were to take a turn, you would watch the compass lag. It's actually going to go the opposite direction for half a second as it tries to acquire where we need to go. So let's go ahead and order a turn to the east. There it goes. Do you see how the compass snapped all the way to 330 as we took that easterly turn? And now what's going to happen is the compass is going to lag. And as we start moving through the 90 degrees, you'll watch the compass rapidly accelerate and start to catch up to where we just were a few moments ago. So now we're just about facing east. And again, I've never known a compass that can recover that quickly. Usually it's a little bit of back and forth. You can see it's now gone ahead and got itself to the other way. Now let's see if you can put this one all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a decelerating turn to the north. See if you can predict without me actually showing you, actually I'm going to show it to you in a second, predict exactly what our compass is going to do. Is it going to keep the heading exactly perfect as I take my turn? Is it going to initially show a lead and then it's going to go to a lag? Is it going to go the opposite direction because I'm combining those two forces together? So I'm going to go ahead and I'll take us out of automatic pilot here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back and I'm going to go ahead and execute my turn here. I'll do a standard rate and you can go ahead and watch exactly what happens with my turn. Tell you one thing we're starting to get really slow <laughs> probably pull my throttle back we're probably going to end up in a stall before we're done with this turn and we'll go ahead and reapply power and come out facing towards the north there. so you can see a lot of things happen now, for one uh, we lost a lot of altitude we lost a lot of speed which is definitely going to impact our acceleration the other thing you probably observed is the compass was just kind of chilling and kind of doing its own thing now there's one more fun thing we can do with the compass of course we can try to subject it to negative g's <laughs> yeah. all right let's go ahead and line ourselves backwards towards the north not backwards, back towards, not backwards, towards. We're just going to line ourselves up. So to do negative Gs in a plane, by the way, especially if you're in a little plane like this, uh, please notify your passengers before you do this, uh, because when they do it, uh, they tend to get a little, um, the, the, the word I use is thunder chunks. I think you can use imagination as to what I'm referencing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a little bit of speed here. Again, it's 172. Speed is a relative term. We use a calendar instead of an airspeed indicator for alt, uh, airspeed. Woo! Go stick my head straight up for some reason. That's looking pretty good. All right, we got plenty of speed here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to initialize a climb, pull up, up, pull the throttle, and we're just going to push the nose down like this. Watch our compass. And we're going to get up to about our maneuvering speed. We're going to slowly pull ourselves out. And we're going to start handing out bags. <laughs> You'll observe exactly what I said. Uh, the compass, even though we are in that particular situation, didn't show any change because we were already facing north. So as you can see, the compass is still a very, very valuable tool on us. You know, if we have for some reason a vacuum failure and we can no longer use the directional gyro, it is still there and it's actually still reliable. We just have to remember that when we're doing any speed or directional changes, the compass will not read correctly. And if you always visualize the compass as having a little string attached to it, trying to point to the North Pole, not so much a string, let's call it an elastic, you'll always be able to predict what the compass will actually be able to do. Enjoy.